Hey everybody, thanks for being here. Today we're going salmon fishing for Fall Run Chinook and Coho, both in Washington and Oregon. Now if you want to learn how to catch more fish, stay tuned. I'm Justin Wolf and this is Angler West Television. It's mid-October and we're on one of the many small western Washington rivers with runs of Chinook and Coho Salmon. This morning we're with guide James Reagan targeting fresh runs of Coho Salmon. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be just working the bank all the way down, uh, casting twitching jigs um, and, and the plugs and it's about three to four feet down here so you want to make sure that we're actually kind of retrieving these pretty quick so we don't get hung up. These fish are just going to be laying right here on, there's little grass clumps in here, so these fish are just going to be laying in here. So that's the third fish that I've had just nip at it. They're not being real aggressive here. They're, they're, they're hitting it, but they're not really whacking it real good. So sometimes these salmon will just, just come up and just nip at it, and you'll feel those kind of come up tight, but they're not taking it all the way in. Sometimes coho especially will get real picky and start doing that. Just had a little bite, just missed them, just a little peck at it, right above this, this seam. Now we're going to work this backside of this seam to see if there's more stacked up over here. That's where I usually find them though, back in these little pockets, back out of the current. This morning, however, the coho are curious, but not in the mood to commit to a jig, so James has decided to push upstream further and to cast rock star plugs, anticipating that their noise, vibration, and flash will trigger the reluctant coho to bite. They're gonna be on this left side here. So same thing, just slack water. There's not really too many snags through here. Um, you might get some grass though if you get too close to the bank. Speaking plugs are running so good they're hard to reel in when you want to finally get them yeah. off. Let's get a plug bite. Off. Oh! It was on the plug. Oh, that was a plug. <laughs> oh. Awesome. <laughs> he hammered it. He nailed it. Right off the bank too. <laughs> My three or four. Five missed casts. Yeah. Man. Nice. He just lit into it. Good. Later. Fish. Got it. All right. Rat. Hey. Looks good. Two fish we've hooked on these plugs, just working the banks, swinging them down. So we're gonna keep working our way down with these and try a couple different colors and see if they react to that. Uh, darker colors seem to be working pretty well. So we're casting plugs out here. I'm fishing the uh, Columbia Composite 802. Uh, basically, nice limber tip, allows that plug to, to dive really well uh, with still enough backbone to fight fish. And we're throwing these, uh, these kind of Charisse colored uh, new spro plugs. They're, uh, this color actually is my favorite. We used to paint them this color long before they were ever available, so we'd, we'd go get our Charisse paint and dip them. So I'm glad to see some somebody making them. Switch to a pink Spro plug. It took about two, three casts. Just working this bank over here. Kind of swung it down through there, and he just hammered it. 
not a huge fish, but a good looking fish. All right. Oh yeah, that's it's oh. Go. Oh, that was a good looking fish too. Yeah. That was really, really putting up a good fight. Yeah, I got a good look at that right when it hooked up, and it was definitely probably a 10 pound solid chrome bright fish. Perfect bead run coho for this time of the year. It's frustrating. We've lost several fish here uh, on on these plugs and the coho they just get into that what they call the death roll they start twisting up and and when they do especially with barbell hooks they throw a hook super easy so you just keep pressure on them and and do everything right and hope for the best Welcome back to Western Washington. I'm Justin Wolf. The Spro Rockstar Salmon and Steelhead plugs are getting plenty of bites, but the hard-fighting coho have managed to twist themselves off the fixed treble hooks, so some simple modifications are in order. Right here. All right. All right. Go, Pink one. There you go, guys. Stop squirming. All right, it's hatchery, so it's coming in the boat. Sweet. All right. Get that hook out there. So we're having trouble landing fish here today. So we uh, we we did uh, a swivel drop back on the on the belly hook, uh, a little bigger hook lets us get a little bit deeper in there. And when they're doing their whole death roll thing, starting to uh, do what coho do, uh, this this uh, can help them ho uh, stay hooked up a little bit better. Oh yeah, nice little beautiful buck right here. Got a silver on here on the plug. Oh, 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 he's coming at us. There he's jumping. He whacked it right at this till out here, right here. Where it kind of comes into these trees. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Bang. <sighs> we saw that fish had both hooks in his mouth and somehow he was able to throw them both. With, uh, with those barbless hooks. On that other pink lure, yeah, we just uh, hooked a fish and landed it and switched and switched up to this guy and hooked another fish and lost it again with dual trebles. So we're gonna, we're gonna change this one up to that same hook set up here. First cast back out with that lure after losing one. Hopefully that changing out that hook will keep him pegged this time. Those trebles are high quality gamakatsus. It's not the uh, necessarily the quality of the hook, it's just those coho just go so crazy that they, they kind of work those trebles against each other at times and are able to throw them out. Here we go. Nice hatchery coho yeah, on a plug. All right. Swinging this plug through this seam line over here, right under that tree. It's a hatchery. Another nice, another nice coho right there. So we changed the over all our plugs. We were running the troubles and then we tried one on the back. We went to this barrel swivel with this side wash off the belly and it seems like we've been sticking them way better. Just right in the corner of the mouth and they're holding on to it well. Big fish. That is a big fish. Hopefully it's not in that tree. Twitching jig? Twitching jig. Squid or? Yeah. Nice. It's right here. Nice. Oh, no. All right. 
Yeah, we'll Woo, take look. it out. Oh yeah. All right, we were coming down through the seam here, and they were throwing throwing plugs. So I decided to throw out this pink squid tail and uh, kind of change it up. And this fish just came up and just hammered this thing. Anyone salmon fishing a small, misty Oregon coast river must be considered fortunate. Today, Josh Cooper and Jason Hambly are the fortunate ones, along with guide Grant Cheely. We've got a six hot gamagatsu here, and we're going to put on eggs and sand shrimp this morning. Always put the sand shrimp on first. They are a lot harder to come by than salmon eggs these days. So I put them on first, and I'll be able to change the eggs and leave the sand shrimp on. I've got two different cures here because we try to be diversified a little bit. On Josh's, I'm going to put on the Procure Wizard, and uh, Jason's, we're going to put on the Red Hot Double Stuff made by Procure. And we'll uh, see which one they like the best today. Isn't this gorgeous? We're float fishing because the water's gotten kind of low, and back is just too hard. It's hard to get a good presentation, but you'll get a really natural presentation with the the eggs under the float. You just uh, you want them a foot or so off the bottom, floating super natural, and the salmon can't seem to ignore it. They grab them. We definitely like big baits. We uh, it's not crazy big baits, big fish. So I've caught them with baits twice as big. Sometimes that's what they really want. I don't truly understand why, but. I don't argue with them, it works. I'm getting a bite. It's that bit. <laughs> yeah, I think a bit. <laughs> We've seen is a coho. Looks like a chinook to me. Oh no! It fell off. I have to go try that again. Dang. We'll go at it again. Can't win them all. So we tried to use a bobber that kind of barely floats. You want it almost neutral buoyancy where your eggs are, when it hits a good current, it'll actually pull it under a tiny bit. Um, but when the fish grabs it, you don't want them to feel the tension of the bobber. So we use one ounce, three quarter ounce bobbers. Um, we've, we've done a little bit of testing. We use a giant bobber. The fish will grab it just as easy, but as soon as they feel the tension from the big bobber, the surface area of the big bobber, they let go over and over. So you've got to set the hook really fast. With these, there's a fish. Oh. oh. Good call. Yeah, I saw it. <laughs> fish? Like shake. I saw the fish. Yeah. So we're using a three quarter ounce fish field and uh, three quarter ounce inline lead. And uh, that official can tow around if he likes your eggs, he won't let go. He'll just hang on. You don't. You can actually let him swim around and swallow it. Um, you don't have to set the hook quick. Jason, you can work on that quick hook set part. <laughs> Told you I was gonna eat. Your bobber was under for like a long time. My barber just went down too, but it popped back up. We almost doubled. He's under the boat. Fishing down here with Grant, he said to, to let him bury it a lot further and hold on to it a lot longer before you set the hook than we're used to up up off the Columbia system. There's actually perfect and... form looking into the trees and not paying attention. That works best always. <laughs> <laughs> so I decided to eat lunch and then set the hook. Ready? And we'll let her go. Gorgeous fish. 
Nice job, Josh. Sweet. Thank you. Pretty. Missed a few fish, setting the hook right away, right when it would, right when it would go down. And uh, Grant told me to let them eat it a little longer, and and that one ate it a long time. I got caught kind of not paying attention a little bit, and that one really ate it uh, for a while, and it worked out. So. so it's November. In November, you've got a good mix of brand new fish still coming up, but the majority of the fish have already come up into the river, and they're uh, they're getting into spawning mode. His bobber's down. Oh, good job, Josh. How about you again? And uh, so you want to be picky on your fish. That fish there wouldn't have had, mine just went under, um, wouldn't have had good meat in it at all. Her eggs might even have been loose, but you want to let her back and go into the gravel and, and spawn and make more babies. Hey, I hope you're enjoying today's episode. Now, before we go back to catch some more fish, I want to show you a little trick that might help you save some bait and some money, plus help you catch more fish. Now, we're fishing bobber and eggs, plus sand shrimp, or go shrimp, as they're called in California. And we don't want to waste that. So what we can do is use a bait button to hold that bait on better, and that's going to help us catch more fish. So this is the 4 Rock Gamagatsu Big River Hook. And these are big game bait buttons. They come in two sizes, but you just slip it right on like that, and your bait's going to stay on better, and you're going to catch more fish. Now let's go back to that beautiful coastal stream and see if we can catch some more fish. Now remember up in Washington, we are using the new Spro Rockstar Salmon and Steelhead plug for the coho. Now down in Oregon, let's give the new Angler West Spro Salmon and Steelhead jig, this Marabou jig, a shot and see what happens. We're hoping to luck into some late season, fresh out of the salt Chinook salmon, but so far we've only hooked darker fish. Lucky for us, however, this river has great stretches of pocket water suited for throwing salmon jigs, which can sure make any day of salmon fishing more fun. Today, twitching jigs will be very productive as we find that the river is full of jack and adult coho salmon. Drifting and casting like this will allow us to cover lots of water, which is exactly what our guide wants us to do. So, I really like to fish fast. I'd like to, I kind of feel like I've got the river dialed well enough and my bait's strong enough. If I float through a hole one time and my guys cast it properly, if there was a fish there, it would have bit. At least a biter would have bit. So, I just keep moving. I, I average 10, 12 miles of river a day. Um, some days I get done early because we don't catch them. But usually you find a couple spots where they're laying and biting and you'll have your day there. But if you fish too slow and only fish a mile and grind it, you may never find those fish. That's two and two casts. You're okay. Jason made a cast and caught a jack, and then the very next cast on the same, the same exact Ripple. jig here. Got a nice little coho. Unhook it real quick. What? So what we're using here is an Angler West Spro Marabou jig. This is what it looks like with the Spro jigs dry. They got a nice flat, narrow head on them, so they, they jig very, very properly. So I'm throwing these Spro Marabou jigs with the, our twitching rod uh, from Cousins, our GTS 79M-1SG. And that's, uh, so we did specifically designed this for twitching jigs and just enough power to, uh, to fight fish, but, and a stiff enough tip to pick those jigs up without working you too hard and still light, light enough weight that you don't get tired while, while fishing it all day. So it works out pretty good for this particular jig. Angler West jig. Zoom the code. There he goes. Nice coho. Oh. There it go. There it goes. Another one on that Spro Marabou salmon jig. They're, they seem to be liking that pink today. So we're in here 
looking for Chinook today, but in between the holes and the little little pocket water, we're just twitching jigs and picking up coho. So it makes kind of a nice day when the sh Chinook aren't necessarily totally cooperating. We've caught a bunch of coho just uh, just messing around makes it for a good day. So these jigs are made with real good uh, stout wired gamakatsu hooks, but you run them into rocks uh, a lot while while twitching and. So you want to make sure that you touch them up uh, whenever you do that. You do this because you're looking for a late season push of fish, and I've done it all the way up to Thanksgiving, even after Thanksgiving. You'll get into a pot of fish that just makes it makes a week of tough fishing really worthwhile. They'll be brand new out of the ocean, sea lice covered, just gorgeous eaters. Um, when you find them, it's really, really fun because they're super aggressive and they fight really hard. and. Uh, but you gotta put in your time to find them, just how it is. I've had to tell them that both of those bobbers were down now. Here's another red one. Mm. Two bobber down. Oh, with a white tail. White tail. So it looks like this one's pretty dark. Pretty dark. All done. <laughs> net that thing. It, it makes my uh, grab pliers on that, Jay. Yeah. We don't want to touch him. <laughs> Three days ago, I was catching, most of them had long tailed sea lice on them. Right. We have plenty like that today. Thanks for watching today's episode. You know, without the support of the sponsors, the show would not be possible. So please thank them when you can. Now get out there and do some great fishing.